after, <clears throat> after looking at that form throwing the ball, um, <laughs> I really do like to thank you for selecting me. <laughs> Bill, congratulations on your role as new athletic director at thank Michigan you. State. <clears throat> I wish you, I wish you nothing but success. To my fellow honorees in the class of 2018, congratulations and much continued success. Godspeed. <clears throat> I've broken a few huddles in my life. Uh, most amazingly, coming from Fayetteville, North Carolina, a segregated high school, and having the opportunity at an education in athletics at Michigan State University. During that time, and all of the years of coaching, I loved the huddle. There's such a strong feeling of codependency when you're in there together. There's nothing quite like it in life. You don't have to pretend in the huddle, and you don't have to cling to any false pretenses. Even the shape of it is perfect, a tightly wound circle. Everybody has their own ambition, and their own wants, but we all share the same desires regardless of background, religion, or ethnicity, the desire for success. There are a few people that I'd like to thank and recognize this evening, starting with my beautiful wife of 50 plus years, Edwina. Thank you for your unconditional love and support through the years. I love you. <laughs> My lovely daughter, Robin, and beautiful granddaughter, Avery Catherine, thank you for taking the time to be here. We love you. My son, Jimmy, thanks for your support through the years. We're very proud of you, and good luck with the Lions. My brother and fellow Spartan, Craig, a former 1978 Big Ten champion, Thank you for your support. <clears throat> My two surrogate sons that I can't seem to shake, <laughs> both former all Big Ten football players, Tommy Graves and Charlie Baggett, thank you for your friendship. <clears throat> yeah. My mom and dad, for having the faith and trust in Coach Duffy Doherty in Michigan State during a very turbulent time in this country. The faith that they would deliver on their promise of my getting an opportunity for an education and graduating. Mrs. Pauline Adams, my guardian angel, MSU Department of Education, your unconditional support and guidance helped make things better in a and a terrified, for a terrified youngster trying to make a difficult transition. I'm forever indebted. Tom Shanahan, co-author of the book, The Ray of Light, thank you for your dedication and documenting the truth. <clears throat> My teammates that are here tonight, and as important, those that aren't here tonight, a very special thank you. We were a special group. One heartbeat and a selfless desire to become champions. We set a standard of excellence that has endured the test of time. I thank you all very much. My brother from another mother, Baba Pisa, <laughs> thank you for your loyalty and support and friendship. I'm glad nobody could see us on the phone crying, two 72-year-old men, when the announcement came of my induction. <clears throat> Ernie Pasteur, Mike Dissinger, Sterling Armstrong, Clinton Jones, and Gene Washington. Your inspiration and support and friendship has meant so much through the years. Bless you all. Willie Thrower, 
thank you. Sandy Stevens, thank you for giving a young boy hope. Coach Duffy Doherty and President John Hanna, my deepest gratitude, respect, and appreciation. It was your vision and foresight to explore the segregated South and provide an ed education and athletic opportunities for black students. Your courage and strong conviction during a very difficult time in this country helped create this moment. I'm forever indebted. In the segregated South, where Jim Crow racist laws prohibited everything from integrating schools to eating in restaurants to sitting at lunch counters, separate drinking fountains, bathrooms, and theaters for black and white people. Education was the vehicle to a better quality of life. Education gave black people the opportunity to rise above the racism and prejudice substandard conditions prevalent in the South. Being, being recruited by Michigan State in the mid-60s during the height of the Civil Rights Movement was extraordinary. Being recruited as a quarterback was an anomaly. The position of quarterback was off limits to athletes of color. The perception that blacks lacked the intelligence, the leadership skills, the communication skills, ability to execute under pressure was an existing stereotype and very, very real. But my mom told me when I was a young boy, that no one has ever cornered the market on desire. No one can have more desire than you. So I learned that ability with discipline, work ethic, attention to detail, perseverance and passion does not discriminate. All of you young... <clears throat> All of you young ladies and young men are required to have the same characteristics in your chosen sports, but without the burden of racism. The obstacles you face in your sports still require ability, discipline, work ethic, perseverance, and passion. I stand before you tonight as living proof that those qualities are colorblind. So the challenge to each of you is to be the best person you can be, be a good teammate, accountable, and dependable, be the best student you can be, and you too can experience the desires of the huddle. In closing, remember, the heights of great men and women reached and kept were not obtained by sudden flight, but they while their companions slept, toiled upward through the night. Thank you and God bless.